All right, just gotta get my trig subbed. Uh huh. You're gonna use trig sub when you see roots. The reason you want to use it, well, not all the times, unless you can get out cheaper and easier ways. Um, this one doesn't appear we can get out any cheaper or any easier. So we see roots, we want to get rid of those roots. The way we're going to get rid of those roots is Pythagorean identities. I'm talking about trig, people. I'm talking about trig. We're looking for one of these three cases. Which one do we have? The top one, the middle one, or the bottom one? The X is first. So we got that bottom one. So here my A man is going to be whatever's being squared, man. That's three squared. So here, I want to let x be what now? 3. Because 3 squared is 9. And I'm fitting the form, subbing this in. I have to have a restriction. Okay, I'll talk about the restriction in a second. So then we're going to let x be 3 times the secant of theta. Yeah. So then, what's going on here? is the secant of theta is x over 3 t he there's a triangle associated with this yeah secant man in the sokotoa chain of things um secant's one over the cosine uh-huh and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so then we have hypotenuse over adjacent so my hypotenuse is x and my adjacent is 3. T he, T he. If we were going through and we were taking a look at this and we completed our Pythagorean theorem, we'd find that this side over here is 9 minus x squared, which is just what we happen to happen. Uh oh, I'm backwards. We're looking for the, yeah, I'm backwards. Why? Because three squared plus, I don't know, squared is x squared. So, I don't know, just happens to be x squared minus nine. And that's what we have there. This is the square root of x squared minus nine. All right, so now that we got that all settled away, that's our triangle. We're gonna refer back to that later. So right now, we need to take a look at, if that's x, I wanna make substitutions. I can stick it there, I can stick it there, but I need to find dx. So dx is three, derivative of secant, secant tangent. Uh-huh, so now I have enough to plug it in, plug it in. My transformed integral is going to be 3 secant theta tangent theta all over 9 secant squared theta times the square root of, wait for it, wait for it, 9 secant squared theta minus 9 d theta. So now I got some trigonometric manipulations to take care of. The three can fight the nine. Oh, so I got a three in the denominator down there. The secant can fight the, oh. So then I have a tangent theta in the numerator and a secant theta in the denominator. And then can I factor out a nine? I will, and I'm not gonna skip, step that skip. Nine times secant squared theta minus one. Fun, and then I still have my d theta out there. Square root of nine, three. T he, T he. So this is the tangent of theta. Uh-huh. And my denominator down there, three times three makes nine, fine. Still got that secant there. And then this is gonna be times the square root of, what's the secant squared minus one? 
the tangent squared. Okay, tangent squared theta. Now this is why we had to go through and make our restrictions on our argument. Why? Because the square root of x squared is defined to be the absolute value of x. Yeah, perhaps I shouldn't have used x. But you see here, if you got something squared and you take the square root of it, it's going to make whatever's inside positive. So it's reasonable to say that we're looking for the absolute value. What we're trying to do is get rid of the absolute value restrictions. And the way we're doing that is restricting our theta. We're restricting our theta to the first and the third quadrant, which happen to be the two places where tangent is positive. So then we can rewrite that integral as tangent theta. I'm going to pull the 1 ninth out front over secant theta times the tangent theta d theta. Fight them. Oh, oh. One over the secant is, oh, this really turns out nice. The cotangent. So now I'm looking at, not the cotangent, the cosine. Now I'm looking at one ninth, the integral, the cosine, theta, d theta. So how does that cosine integrate? The integrate, the integ, mm, sine, okay, sure. This is one ninth the sine of theta plus c. T he, t he, but wait, there's more. My original integral involved only x's. Here I have a sine theta, and I do have my original triangle, the one that we made from the secant. The secant is, um, got it here. Now we need to read the sine off of that. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So this is going to be 1 ninth opposite square root x squared minus 9 over opposite over hypotenuse x plus c t he t he. Can you do that? A box and a flower.